bathroom really quick. Yeah, um, this is one of those matches that we uh, see quite often here at Coinbox and uh, one that has kind of a little bit of controversy steeped in it with Shari Mark uh, really implementing the campier play style, but I, I really like the way that Shiny Mark is kind of moving uh, with the character. Like, it's it's easy to be like, oh, it's it's like lame or whatever, but I think it's cool to see like the absolute limits. Thank you to Buzz for the raid. The Buzz, that's um, the raid, Absolute man. limits of these characters. Yeah, in addition, like, there are some play styles that you just have to go ahead and pull out against certain characters. Like, Sonic is a character that can go ahead and move with the best of them. The, the dash speed is just absolutely phenomenal. And then also he can play incredibly mix-up heavy with those spin dash cancels. So do you really want to run at that? Is, that? is that what you want Shiny Mark to do? Or do you want to go ahead and have this character use his great movement options with that up B and then use that projectile, which Sonic lacks, to go ahead and try to force approaches? Like, you, you gotta go ahead and feel for the players. Like, you know that they're doing what they need to go ahead and get that paycheck. Because with $3,000 on the line, I mean, I'm doing whatever it takes to go ahead and get that dub. Yeah, exactly. And one of the things that um, Shiny Mark does is it goes for that stall, and it's a really, really smart option. I mean, it forces you to always be on your toes on, um, you know, what ledge you're gonna have to ledge trap Shiny Mark on. As I say, that's Sonic's hitting a big forward smash. But, you know, see there, you commit to another forward smash thinking, okay, Shiny Mark might get, you know, a little antsy so just trying to get back to the ledge, but you're ending up on the other side of the stage. So, man, it's rough to catch this mouse. Agreed. Yeah, even for a character like uh, Sonic. It is relatively low risk to toss out those forward smashes, though, given the fact that, like, Uppy does so little damage. That you can usually go ahead and try to extend your hitbox right there and catch either the ledge or an aggressive attempt to catch you with that Uppy with something like even an up smash, too. If you got those disjoints, you can toss that out and try to just beat out that relatively small hitbox. But, oh, no, a little bit of a buffer issue off stage for Sonics. Looks like that neutral beat caught Sonics trying to go ahead and hit an Uppy, but instead just spin dashes down to the depths. Yeah, and unfortunately, it caught, caught, uh, sorry, it caught the double jump as well, so you couldn't even double jump out of the move to cancel it. That's so unfortunate. Some of those situations are absolutely crucial in this set, and we're going to see Shiny Mark at his best attempt to run away with it. Gets a down throw here, and that's going to be double up air, back air, big damage so far, especially if, you know, that, time, uh, that timer uh, kind of starts ticking down. Um, any percent is good percent for Shiny Mark here on this one stock lead. Scrambling for the center stage here and really utilizing the shield really, really well. And knowing sometimes it's good to jump away and start throwing out those T-Jolts, but it's also equally as good to stand your ground in center stage and pull up that shield and kind of wait to see what Sonics is going to do on shield. And wow, you, at, at any moment where you're like, can Pikachu make it back from there? Shiny Mark definitely has a has an angle in his uh, tool belt to get, get back to the ledge because I can't believe he lived that. For sure, yeah, this character, the answer is always yes, Pikachu can make it back because this easily top five recovery in the game in my book. Like the up beat just gives you so many permutations of those angles and how can you cover them all? Yeah, it's so right. I mean, even for a character like Sonic, it's just, it's just impossible. No, exactly. It's like now you're underneath the stage, you stall the thunder, and then you have to take a 50-50. Is he going to go left? Is he going to go right? There's there's no tell right there. And look at that. Using the upbeat, but we are seeing that there is a little bit of lag at the very tail end of it. So if Sonic can go ahead and, like, DI down and then be ready in a spot with either, like, say, a down tilt or a forward smash, you can get punishes. But uh, the problem is you have to guess right. <laughs> and so many opportunities for Shiny Mark to go ahead and force you to guess wrong and then get a hard punish afterwards if you try to overcommit. Yeah, I mean, okay, Shiny Mark so far has been absolutely elusive this last lock. Just cannot, uh, Sonic cannot get a meaningful hit, finally getting a backer there. But from coast to coast at 152, it's not going to be enough. And yeah, the thing about that stall that's really good is that um, at higher percent, you get le less ledge invincibility, but the longer you're off stage, the more you get. So you're able to stall really long off stage and then just grab the ledge and still be unto frameable. So, so important. Dog, we are four minutes in, and this Pikachu has not lost a stock yet. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> this is just insane survivability. Finally, after we pass the four-minute mark, Shiny Mark's first stock is gone. Just showing the survivability of this Pikachu if you just don't allow yourself to be in areas where your opponent can toss out those hefty hitboxes. No back airs, no forward smashes, nothing connecting at kill percent. Now, Shiny Mark has the opportunity to press. We've got advantage. We've got a huge, healthy stock and percent lead. 
Yeah, and it's important here for Shiny Mario, like, okay, I'm taking some damage, but it's important to not give those scared air dodges or, or going for those really, really panicky options because Sonic, that's when Sonic is able to get those really big punishes that, you know, end True. up getting you gimped. Even as a character like Pikachu, everyone gets forward smash at 60 on the ledge by Sonic, and that's going to be your stock. Yeah, that's a really good point, PJ. Like, the panic options are so difficult to not toss out occasionally. It's one yeah. of those things where people don't really realize that a lot of these characters, when they're playing defensively and they're not hitting buttons, it's kind of fun to hit buttons in this game. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing. It takes a real, like, iron will to play super defensively and never overextend. But, I mean, in the Battle of the Wills, it kind of feels like Sonic is starting to pull away right here. That lead that we talked about, the 100 or so percent that Shiny Mark had in the back pocket, has started to evaporate. Like, we're at the point now where a forward smash with solid rage may very well kill Pikachu. But as soon as I talk about that rage, Sonic gets it stripped away with that great confirm there with the forward tilt at the end. I'm not sure if that was a DI mix-up, but because if you go for the drag down down smash there, I think it sends to the left. But uh, mm -hmm. Shiny Mark opting for the forward tilt there, just, you know, I think it's also, if it wasn't a DI mix-up, just a, a really smart option. Good stuff from Shiny Mark getting the best punish he could out of that situation. As uh, you see Sonic absolutely running at full pace to Shiny Mark, knowing that, you know, if you could continue to smother, there's not a lot of time for Shiny Mark to reverse. So now it's one minute left. And this could be this is a timeout situation with only a 10% lead for Shiny Mark. So we get down to the 50 second mark. The forward air comes through 4% only on those two hits of forward air. And Sonic playing safe here. Obviously, you don't want to get reversal because that big combo potential from Pikachu could definitely just be the end of the stock or end of the game, sorry, as we now have a bit of a bigger lead for Shiny Mark, but still, I mean, you got a lot to do if you're Sonic here. I know 20% doesn't seem like a lot, but if you're literally never getting hit, it can be a mountain to climb. Agreed. I mean, this is, I hope you like oh. coin flips, because we're in Ooh. for a series of 50-50s, and whoever guesses right might be walking away with it. Only 0.5% now separates these two players. One T-Jolt starts to widen the gap right here, and now Shiny Mark, absolutely no desire to interact, but we guess right. Three times in a row there, Shiny Mark went to the left, and Sonic finally oh. caught on. Sonic had a lead for a while, but the T-Jolt came through and I was able to shift it back. Now Sonic, the one running away with it. Can Shiny Mark get the downer? No, he does not. He goes for it all there, and that's going to be Sonic with a timeout. It is so difficult to play that win condition versus Sonic's, and that's going to be Sonic's taking game number one. Oh my goodness. It literally came down to the last neutral interaction. That last panic option we were talking about. Mm -hmm. I was talking about how it can kill you, but it could literally just shift it by 10% and that's the game. Oh my god. Literally 10%. That's all it was. It was one single hit separated these two from victory and defeat. And at the very end, Sonic hit him up with that little taunt, letting Shiny Mark know that you're too slow. Because that was not about character speed that caught it up. That was the mental speed right there. Sonic's had a game plan, stuck with it, and managed to, in the pivotal moment, prove that he's just a little bit more clutch. Exactly. And Shiny Mark had a lead going into that last minute mark, but. Sorry, uh, Sonics was able to just make that come back in a major way. Back to small battlefield here. But that's going to be, uh, it's going to be game number one in the books, man. We waited so long for the set to happen and immediately <laughs> game one is a timeout situation. Oh my goodness. Listen, we tried to ice the players out, so they had to return the favor to us. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. It's funny because you're what I I, uh, I say this a lot whenever I talk about and especially after commenting with you, but you're one of the people that I think embodies like the suit and tie commentary in Smash Ultimate. Like I don't that's a that's a compliment by the way. I don't mean to be mean. I don't know if you would take it that way anyway. But um, like I want to see how long it takes to break your will because <laughs> this because this will break your will. Like no matter how good of a commentator you are, if you have to commentate enough of these timeouts, it becomes really difficult to be suit and tie. Um, I, I feel it, like you took one set to break two of these happen. Me and Jet, I think oh, no. I, got, I I got broken. Like like I I admit Jet Jet was hanging on. Jet's the goat, B bigger man than me because I I gave up. Like I had to. It was like it was Sonic, Sonic's two Nesses, Wrath and Shiny Mark. It was awful. That sounds like a fun topic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think the worst set that I ever had to do during quarantine, I, I did a set with, um, it was Rob Joker, and it was a Grand Finals Game 10 reset, and it went an hour and 10 minutes. 
an hour t- an hour and 10 minutes they, they did like two they had three game five sets that night because winners finals is also those two it was like mj and uh oh god i can't remember the joker's name but yeah it, I've, I've been in some rough sets online for sure but uh we'll have to see right here if shiny mark can go ahead and make sure that this one goes to the wire too yeah i mean the thing is that Shiny Mark milks a lot of the clock in literally everything that Pikachu does. If you're recovering, it's like taking four seconds. Comboing, it's taking four seconds. Everything is taking so much time, but in a blink of an eye, Sonic's able to close it out with that back here, and all that lead melts away now as Sonic has a big lead here and a big initiative to con- continue to put on this percent. And uh, now you're going to be seeing Shiny Mark in a completely different mode now, having to take, take charge here and try to close out the stock. Agreed, and we talked a little bit about how that up B has just an absolute ton of mix-up potential, but Sonic just kind of knows. Oh, no! Oh, oh. We talk about the mix-up. That's definitely one you want back right there, the angle ever so slightly off, and now Shiny Mark, this, uh, this tiny deficit is starting to spiral out of control. Big dash attack from Shiny Mark to make this a one-stock to two situation. This is such... This might be one of the biggest... Um, challenges in Smash Ultimate is making this comeback versus Sonic's. Like, how do you come back two stocks in one here? We're going to have to see Shiny Mark pull out something absolutely crazy to make this comeback. And now you're seeing, uh, so far, Sonic's just not giving up, not even taking an, a hit while doing 51% to Shiny Mark's last stock. I mean, if he's got the switch in hand, then it might be time to pull out that lag switch because that might be the only way where you're getting back here cleanly. All of a sudden, all right, it's Wi Fi time and wireless time. Nice, gets the downer into dash attack. I mean, any percent is good to start, but it's it might be one of those situations of a little too little too late because it's just going to be an abs. I mean, I don't know how to make this comeback. I, I'm not a competitor. Like, I'm not that good at this game, but this is one of those situations that it's just like, I would give up. I don't know how, how they do it. I really don't. Yeah, they're like there are some players that have made comebacks like this. Like, I, I mean, my, my biggest one is my inspiration is, um, do you know Mike Hayes? Yeah, my case, yeah. Yeah, old melee player. He used to just shout at people when he was down. Like, oh, yeah. Would, would grab him, the chain grab him or wobble him with ice times. He would just scream. So that's that's what we need to do here. We need to have the shiny mark perhaps rely on some out-of-game interactions to go ahead and try to lead into an in-game victory. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had a friend who had a hamster that would uh, eat her, her wires. Time, oh, to put, no. time to put time to put the haps on the Ethernet, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> try, try, like, try, you got you got to hope for some sort of uh, some sort of animal or something to make this go because it's rough. Like, I don't I don't mean to discredit a Shiny Mark at all. Like, no, I, I love Shiny Mark. He's my my favorite player to watch right now. But dude, this is impossible. What do you yeah, do? it's just Sonic, Sonic at Advantage State. Like, it's not about a player thing. Like, Sonic is a great player, but this is also just what the character does. The character is designed to work with a lead and make these comebacks incredibly difficult. And you know Sonic's game plan. He understands this character front to back. This is not something that is new to him. He's been in this situation before, and that's, it just can make it super, super difficult. You have to play beyond just like winning one or two interactions in a row you have to win for a solid two and a half minutes and that's all the time you really got it's it's easy to be like oh you know okay the one two three not enough to close it it's easy to be like oh it's one interaction at a time but when you're down such a big deficit you're also thinking about like after i take this stock i gotta like really think about it and i like you have to oh i have to still you know take that last stock and i still have to win neutral like 15 times it's just so difficult and unfortunately uh I, not unfortunately for sonics of course but uh unfortunately for shiny mark uh, that's going to be sonics closing it out uh that game and the unfortunate sds on shiny mark's side just put the nail in the coffin it's crazy to see like when it's two stock to one and being like, it's impossible. I know it's it sounds like I'm discrediting Shiny Mark, but it really is just me watching so much of Sonics. It demoralizes me and I'm just watching, you know what I mean? So Shiny Mark, mean, Sonics, he, he has a crazy game plan for this. You call it two stocks to one, but really it feels like two players to one because in addition to having to beat Sonics, you have to beat the timer. And we were at two minutes right there. That is going to be one where, do you really think that you can enough neutral interactions into two minutes to beat Sonic? <laughs> that's that's a tall order for any player. Yeah, exactly. As we get a little bit of a scenery change here onto FD for Shiny Mark, but um, I think the platforms are kind of becoming a little bit of a nuisance uh, in the T-Jolt game. So what you saw in Small Battlefield is a lot of times Pikachu players want to put a T-Jolt 
on the ground, but from the corner, and that big platform makes it difficult at times to like drift in with that T jolt. But now with no platform, it's going to be easy for Shiny Mark to set up those really long range T jolts. In addition, we already saw a couple of those Nair loops. Those can lead to huge damage, only 40% or so on the first one. But uh, good God, I've seen Pikachu players do filthy things on Final B with Nair. Offstage opportunity, but we're going full commitment with the side B. And betting incorrectly means all of a sudden you've given up full advantage to Sonics. Now stuck in the corner here is Shiny Mark, but does manage to make it out. Great shield at the end of that right there, recognizing that defensive options were in play. Missed tech, but can't get the jab lock. Unfortunate situation that Shiny Mark just barely missed out on. Yep, beat to the other side of the stage. Shiny Mark still keeping it safe here. Gets the rising there to punish that lag towards the ledge. You gotta respect Shiny Mark on the ledge there. And um, yeah, so I, I, I'm thinking about this now, like, one of the uh, big weaknesses... Okay, the forward smash comes through. That's a big tide change. Once again, Shiny Mark having a big lead, but Sonic makes one call out, and that's going to be literally the stock. And now we're, we're at three stocks to two. I don't even know what I was going to say, but man, now you got a I'm big matzo to climb. <laughs> Occasionally, you just guess right, and to be honest, I don't call those guesses too frequently. Like it feels as though Sonic is so consistent at hitting those kinds of reads that it 100% is not a guess. This man is not out here saying I'm just going to go ahead and believe for some reason that Shiny Mark goes left or right. It's entirely about that Sonic is actually a god at pattern recognition, and it's the smallest things: your jump angles, your up the angles, which side of the stage you're going to go on when you're underneath the platform. If you can get a read there, it feels as though Sonic's watches the game at an incredible level. Yeah, I mean, well said, Sonic's just being one of those players that makes those reads look like scheduled scheduled work for him, and now getting a two-stock to one situation once again for Shiny Mark. I do think that on this stage, it's a little bit more likely of a comeback scenario, but Sonic's is playing jump rope with these t jolts and just not taking any excess damage. And even when he does, it's literally just one straight hit, and takes a lot of stray hits and there might not even be enough time to get enough stray hits to make this comeback happen but shiny mark's gonna just try to play safe continue the game plan knowing hey i still have four minutes on the clock maybe sonics will be the one to lose the patience but so far i mean even if you're taking three hits three single hits and sonics is getting one it just means so much more because you have that stock lead especially as the time dwindles down yeah it feels like the game plan was here but the execution just unfortunately wasn't and now Sonic is able to just jump around these T jolts, and really, like, you're getting three to four percentage from when each one of these hits. At, at what point is it like it's just not worth it? Given the time that we have left, maybe you can't actually rely on those projectiles to win neutral for you. Maybe you have to start taking bigger bets. Yeah, exactly. And those bigger bets, I mean, definitely are what is called for, but is what exactly Sonic is looking for. You know what I mean? True. Like, it's just so rough where it's like. You can't, um, you can't force yourself into the now it's time to take risk too early because Sonic is going to be ready for that. So like, you know, trying to be um, unpredictable is exactly what's predictable in these situations, which just adds another layer to the difficulty that is this end game for Sonic. It is just one of those situations where it's like, what do you do here? True, prime analysis as always, PJ. But now, again, these lingering hitboxes trapping Shiny Mark in the corner are giving Sonics more opportunities to reset the situation and try for another early killing blow. Retreating back with the spin dash here, and now Shiny Mark fighting for every millimeter of stage. And if you guess wrong, you just get carried right back off stage and right back to the corner. Rich for the landing there. I like the pull-up shield from Shiny Mark, knowing that Sonics was going to land with a button. Gets the footstool on the shield now, and just continuing to be elusive. Doesn't need to be this crafty with this big of a lead, but just saying, yeah, I'm not going to give it to you. Like, I can, I can still time you out from this position. Um, that might be what we're seeing. The dash attack coming through for Shiny Mark, not even close to killing at 105%. Even then, he you know, it's coming through, trying to find a landing there. Really anything from Shiny Mark. Oh, right. that dash attack, that's a little bit optimistic right there, and that should do. The back throw gives Sonics the 3-0 victory over Shiny Mark with a dominant two-stock to finish the set. That's going to be a 3-0 for the favor of Sonics. Congratulations. Moving on into winner's finals, 
as we move now into Wrath versus Sonics.